everyone. In this particular tutorial, we're going to talk about using Webplot Digitizer. This is a great piece of software where you can extract data from uh, graphs, figures in reports or peer-reviewed articles where you know you can't find the raw data in supplementary material, etc., or, or data archives. So looking for Webplot Digitizer on Google, we come to this link here and it takes you to the Webplot Digitizer website. So it's worth familiarizing yourself with the layout of this website so you can see what it's about. Um, there's some tutorials which you can use once you get a bit more um, savvy on how to use it um, to build up your confidence and maybe your skills in it if you want to use it for something a little bit more technical than what I show you today. You can download this onto your computer or laptop but all I'm going to do is uh, use it on the internet um, here. So I'm going to press launch now and it takes me to the main site where we can start extracting data from. So this is kind of a template um, area to show you where a figure would be. Um, you've got some tutorial fiddle, uh, sort of videos that you can um, access from here as well. And you'll notice that as I hover my mouse over this kind of template figure, my mouse turns into a cross and that'll become important for selecting data points. But more importantly, up here on the top right hand side, as I hover my mouse over the figure, you'll see that it's really been um, zoomed in. So it gives you better precision in terms of extracting your data points on figures. Now the first thing we need to do is get an image of the figure you want to extract your data from. So I've got here, uh, well, I've got a paper I'm gonna use. One of my papers here is um, open access in the Journal of Animal Ecology. And I can scroll down to a figure I want to extract data from, so I'm going to use this. This is my metabolic response um, data from an Antarctic sea urchin exposed for um, short periods of time. So we've got zero months, half a month, one month, and then up to 24 months under different pH um, conditions in seawater. So in these kind of websites, you can download the figure itself on a PowerPoint slide and then save that as or export it as a JPEG file. Or alternatively, if you're working from PDFs, which most of you will be, um, here I've got the same paper in PDF form, um, you can, you can um, get a screenshot of the figure you want to look at. So I'm going to do a screenshot here. Uh, so I want a Mac, so this kind of um, appears this way. I'm going to select that, and it's taken uh, an image for me where I've uh, predetermined where it's going to be saved. So I can now load this image. So I can choose the file, and I've got it here, screenshot graph. And here we get a list of things, a uh, list of options on how we can extract data. So here, this is kind of like a, where you've got data on both the y and x axes, which might be important to you. But in this particular example, I don't need that. I just need the 2D bar plot. So I'll select that, press the line axes. And it's very intuitive, this program. It will tell me what the kind of next steps are. So one of the first things we do need to do with this software is basically, in a sense, is calibrate it to the scale of the figures that we want to look at. So we've already got those in the figures with the x, uh, x axes or y axes, which is great. And the way we do it is we basically have to click on two points, uh, the, l the lowest point and the highest point of the axes, and then tell it how much those values are, and then we'll be able to extract data. So it's telling us where to do it uh, on the different scenarios here. So I'll press proceed, and I'll start selecting these points. So Remember I said about the top right hand side being maximized. This is the most important bit here with the cross because basically what we want to do is make sure the point we um, calibrate our figure or even extract our data on, we need to be consistent on our approach. So we need to make sure it's dead in the middle of the uh, axes, lines or data points. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And you should take your time with this. Don't rush it because otherwise you'll make mistakes or data will be inaccurate. So I'll press there and you can see that point one or P1 has appeared on my figure. So I'm now going to go up to the top of the axes like the instructions told me initially 
I'm happy that point is now in the middle of the line. I'll click there and I've got the second point of my y-axis um, indicated for the range. So I'm going to press complete and now it's asking me to tell it what those actual values are on the axes. So point one, which is P1, we know that's zero. Some of you will come across figures where this ax this, uh, these axes are truncated, so meaning that they don't necessarily start from zero, they may start from 23 or 100 or whatever. So do keep an eye out for that, don't make any assumptions. Again, take your time and actually look at the information in front of you. So that's at zero. And then the next point we know is at eight. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And again, take your time and double check those values before you press OK, because otherwise this will lead to mistakes. So as, as good scientists, we're always double checking our numbers and our points. OK, so it's accepted that calibration and that means we're ready to go. So there's a lot of information available on this particular figure. And I'm particularly interested in uh, looking at control, seawater pH, which is this dark bar here, and the most um, acidic scenario for ocean acidification, which is this light gray bar here. Now, the other thing I have is I have a um, temporal scale here. So in some cases, it's not appropriate to take um, all those time samples. Um, so here, I may be interested in the short-term exposure of the animals, so that'll be the immediate introduction to these acidic um, control scenarios versus the longest time point. So some of you may need to consider that kind of approach in terms of the data that you're looking at. Um, so I'm going to get my mean values of this oxygen consumption or metabolic rate data for my controls first. So I'm going to click uh, over the mean point. So you can see on the top right hand that that sits nicely in the middle of my mean point for my control at zero months. So I'm going to click there. And then within the same treatment, I'm going to pick the most the longest time point in the control scenario and click there. So I'm going to look at that data. Now this is the really important thing again is, is critiquing your approach, uh, making sure that the data look like what they should be. So for example, at bar zero here, my first data point, I know it should sit somewhere between three and four micromoles of oxygen per hour per gram of ash we dry mass. So I look at bar zero here and it's a 3.5 and then several decibel, decimal points later. So that's fine, that reads correctly. And then again, over here at the other end, at 24 months where I've got my bar one, that looks like it's between two and three, and that reads there. So always check this information because otherwise you'll get lots of mistakes. You can download this as an Excel CSV file, which you can convert then into a normal um, Excel file. Uh, or you can copy it to clipboard. I'm just going to um, press Control copy on my keyboard and then go to my Excel file, uh, sorry, Excel <laughs> file uh, here. So I'm going to um, paste that there. Now it's good to keep traceability of the information you're gathering here because you never know what kind of distractions you're going to get and you'll lose track and have to start again. So remember, these are my control values. Okay, so I'm going to put Control. I'm going to insert another thing there. I've got time as another value in months. So keep those units in there because they'll be very valuable when you're extracting information from lots of uh, different sources. So that first, um, so that's the first one was at zero months, remember, and the other one was at 24 months. Okay. Oh, helps if I can spell. Okay, and I'll drag that down. Okay, so we've got control, control. Well, you can see that this information is kind of gathered up in an inappropriate manner, but I'll show you how to deal with that later on. So I'm going to get my uh, other data points now. So we'll close that. So we're going to remove those data points now. So we can go to delete data point, click on there and that disappears, and then click on there. And then we're going to add data points from our different pH scenario. So here, this is our most acidic scenario. So you can call it year 2100, or you can refer to specific pHs, it's up to you. And I'm going to click there at the mean, and then the same time points as we did for our controls there. 
and then we will view data, copy and paste. So there I will put year 2100. But I would encourage anyone using this information to put the specific pH as well. The, the more information, the better. We know that those are the same time points. Okay, so we now have to split this information up. Okay, so the way we can do that is if we select that bar, so this particular cell, we know all the information is in that single cell. So we can select that column, we can go to data, and we can go to text to column. So it's basically what we can do is we can delimit the data, it means that we can separate information out in, in a cell across into different columns. So it shows us here a preview of what is currently in a single column. So we go to next, and we can see here we've got commas and spaces which separate this bar information and our actual data that we want. So we need to make sure we include that information. We've got a space and we've got a comma. And we go to, and then you can see straight away it tell, shows us how it's going to be split up across the different columns. So we press next and we press finish and it's done. Okay, so here we're going to put mean um, oxygen consumption or mean metabolic rate and in the and inside the uh, commas, remember to include your units. So on here, you've got units which are your micromoles of oxygen per hour per gram of ash-free dry mass. Okay. Uh, and I'd also, I'm not going to type that now, just for the sake of saving time. But I would also put information here about where you um, source that information, what literature that was, because it gives you good traceability of your information then. So we have the mean metabolic rate, but quite often we'll also need the standard error or standard deviation information and the um, number of data points, like number of observations, which will be described in the materials and methods. Because quite often all this information will allow us to calculate other factors which might be important for stati statistical tests uh, or anything else that you want to um, look into and may allow some, for some calculations. Um, so it's always worth thinking about how much data you're going to need. It's better to have more data than too little. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do then is I'm going to extract the standard error bars now uh, for these points. So let's, um, I'll show you another um, technique here as well. Once you get more familiar with your approach, you will get a much more efficient on how you extract your data. So I'm going to um, get the, so here we've got our uh, one star standard error um, bar here. So I'm going to click at the top there, because that's where we got the mean for our first control value. So I'm thinking about the order that this is listed in the Excel file. So we then got the control mean value for 24 months. So I'm going to click there. And then underneath in our Excel file, we've got the uh, year 2100, or the most sort of acidic scenario. Um, at zero months, so I'm going to click on the error bar there, and then lastly again at 24 months. Okay, so I'm going to view that data, I'm going to copy it again, and put it here. So we know that we've done this in the same order as, as these points here, okay? But what we have now, so you, you might be you might be um, tempted to list that as your standard error straight away, but it's not because you have a mean value um, incorporated into the upper one standard error unit. So we need to make sure we deduct that so we can get a one standard error unit. So what we're gonna do, oh look, Excel Word has unusually helpfully already split that data up for me. Uh, that doesn't actually normally happen, so that's, that's very useful. So we're going to get rid of the um, bar data and then put, um, mean plus standard error plus one standard error unit okay now to work out one standard error unit we basically um, get that so that's your mean and your standard error unit which is slightly above the mean and we get rid of the mean value and there we have our standard error value there we go and most importantly 
we make sure we save this as we go along so we don't lose data or time. So that in a nutshell is how you, um, how you extract data from a figure. Um, have a go, have a play. Um, it's, it's really intuitive and it's very easy to use. And again, once you get more familiar with using it, um, you'll get more efficient and faster, but take your time so you don't make errors and keep checking that information. Make sure these data sound like um, what they should be from the figure because making mistakes can be very easy, but if you take your time and keep an eye out, you can avoid that. So good luck and uh, enjoy extracting data from the figures available to you.